That's right. We're on live. We're going to get this thing done one way or another. What's up to y'all? and I'm down at Likens Park in the Northeast Corridor of Kansas City, Missouri, where I spent 17 years of my 21 years of being bought, sold, um, homeless, <laughs> addicted, prostituted. I went through a lot of stuff over the years, being paid for, sometimes as many as 20 times a day. Um, you know, in that journey, a lot of things happened. You know, I dealt with the disease of addiction, sometimes for a coping mechanism um, to deal with the trauma, um, so I didn't have to feel. Um, you know, one of the things I think we forget to address when we think about um, the world of, of trafficking and exploitation, prostitution, um, is we don't really talk about the demand. Um, you see, if nobody would have been out here paying for me, you know, a trafficker wouldn't have had a reason to sell me. Some of the most vile and heinous experiences that I endured from being stabbed and left for dead at the Missouri River, from being hogtied and branded with a cattle iron like I was an animal. You know, so those, those things, happened by the buyers of sex, the men, the men who paid for me. You know, when we talk about trafficking, we're always talking about new laws and legislation to go after the traffickers. Oftentimes, it's been my experience in the 16 years I've been out, lots of times the guys that are out here trafficking women oftentimes have Occurred some of the same similar family breakdowns and abuse that leads women into this life. Not saying <laughs> the traffickers aren't bad guys and aren't saying that they're not manipulative and cunning and heinous in their own right. I'm just saying the missing part of this fight is the demand. For example, if you have five pimps with 10 women each or men, or boys, or girls, or any combination of 10 individuals that they're selling in their circuit. Did you know for those five pimps, for those 10 human beings that they're selling, on average, those individuals, whether they're being paid for online, in a hotel, in the back rooms of a strip club, in a massage parlor, or in street prostitution, which has now kind of became a new thing again after the shutdown of back pages. Do you know if they're turning 20 dates in a 24 hour period of time, that that's a thousand human beings willing to pay <laughs> for the objectification, for sexual gratification of a human being. A thousand buyers to keep the five pimps in business. So help me understand why we're not doing more to address the demand. My name is Christine McDonald. I was trafficked as a minor, never identified. When I became 18, I didn't magically no longer become a trafficking victim, but I became an adult and was criminalized. I think the more we know, the better we can help. I'm the author of Cry Purple, and the same kind of human, seeing the marginalized and exploited through eyes of grace. This park right here, I learned where my friend Penny was murdered. This park right here, I used to climb up in the fountain and clean up when I had nowhere else to go. I used to sleep behind this park by a concrete wall in the winter time, just so I didn't have to sleep in places where I might be raped. On this corner, I used to stand. I would get picked up. Guys would drive down the street. We would walk down. You'd get in the car, circle the block, 
turn a date and they would drop you right back. So this corner is a really easy corner um, to work. You know? I spent a lot of time, a lot of hours on this corner. One time a guy picks me up on this corner. I'll never forget. Because by the bank there's a clock. It's like three o'clock in the morning. I hadn't been picked up in hours and I needed to make money. My pimp was across the street watching me. This guy pulled over and I got in and he took off driving. And he said, do you know Jesus? And I said, oh, do you have any money? And he says, but I need you to know Jesus. You need to know about your salvation. And as he carried on, it was clear he didn't have any money and wasn't going to pay for my services, but he kept driving. You see, the thing is, is the rules on the street is the longer you're in a car, more money you're expected to bring back. I tried to get out a couple of times, but he never came to a complete stop. When I finally was able to get out of the car eight blocks away, by the time I walked back, my guy was waiting for me. I ended up with two cracked ribs, two black eyes, and a dislocated shoulder. Sometimes the most well-intentioned individuals mean the best, but don't understand the culture. I believe the more we know, the better we can help. These steps right here is where we learned one of our friends, Harlan, had Parkinson's disease. And this park right here is where he was shot dead. These steps right here is where we learned about one of our friends, Marie, whose body was found in the Missouri River. She'd been shot three times and she's discarded like trash. <laughs> so many things here in this park for my story. You know, the, the community around here, <laughs> it exists simultaneously with a world of invisible people, homeless, addicted, prostituted, trafficked, people, invisible, and yet present. I never understood that in all my years. <laughs> But I know that when we understand the complexities behind it, you know, that we can do something about it. I, um, I used, to, used to tell my friends that would sit down here and they would dream. I remember Harlan saying, do you think there's a God? And if there is, do you think he loves people like us? It's like, I don't know nothing about that God mess. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I used to hope at some point there would be people that would see us and that we wouldn't be invisible and that people would care. I'm a part of an amazing group called Relentless Pursuit <laughs> um, and our, our goal, our heart, our passion is to see these people. We want to eradicate the selling of bodies in our community. I believe that in my lifetime, we can see an end to this. I'm Christine McDonald, the author of Cry Purple and The Safe Kind of Healing. Thank you for listening.